Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining for the second part today. Uh, am I audible? Uh, it would be great if someone could tell me whether I'm audible so that I can proceed accordingly because uh, I do remember uh, many people telling me that I had audio issues last time due to choppy network connection. So uh, you can keep me updated through the course of the live whether you can hear me or not or if you have any issues hearing me. But as of now, am I audible? Okay, I am audible. Thank you, Dr. Sahitya and Prativa. I hope I got the pronunciation right. And Dr. Meeda. Um, so let's get started. Um, do you want me to go back to anything that I uh, mentioned during the previous presentation? Or would you like me to continue with uh, fresh content? Do we have any takes? Um, since network was bad last time, uh, I just thought I could possibly reiterate something that you wanted me to repeat. Uh, if not, I think I will get started with um, today's presentation. Uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, we are going to cover as to how we can make dental conferences count. Um, so during the previous live, we covered the basics of registering for a dental conference, what to keep in mind while you register, and once you have registered, how you can prepare for a dental conference. And today I will be delving into the depths of a dental conference, uh, what it entails basically, and um, how you can prepare for each aspect of it. I also mentioned some important dental conferences, uh, noteworthy conferences to keep in mind when you visit the state so that you can register in advance. In addition, I also mentioned some additional resources that you can refer to in order to make sure that you are aware of the um, dental landscape in the United States. Uh, without much ado, I will get started. Okay, so we are going to continue with the different components in a dental conference. It includes continuing education, visiting the exhibit floor, paper and poster presentations. So under continuing education, we have lectures and symposia as well as hands-on courses. Lectures and symposia are essentially the same. Um, they are shorter sessions. Lectures in general would be shorter. On the other hand, symposia are composed of a number of lectures pertaining to a single topic so they might be a little longer in duration if you were to look at lectures they would probably range from an hour to two but symposia will definitely last longer um, you are likely to register for symposia which um, may vary in duration somewhere between three to six hours but on an average five hours based on what i have noticed and uh, lectures and symposia may be associated with lesser CE points in general. Uh, and the number of hours you attend is usually equal to the number of CE points or credits that you get. Moving on to hands-on courses, um, these are definitely a step higher. Uh, at the same time, you would have to pay a higher fee in order to register for the same. I forgot to mention the average fee for lectures and symposia. Um, I believe based on um, what I noticed last year, um, the cheapest lecture that I came across was um, available at around $20. Once again, a ballpark value. Uh, it might give or take five. So uh, it could either be something between $15 to $25. That's the lowest price that I came across. Uh, when it comes to hands-on courses, I should say that they're definitely expensive, nothing available at a two-digit two price. So um, it started at around $250, as far as I remember. I think that was the uh, cheapest hands-on course that I came across. And there were many which 
uh, went up to thousand and thousand five hundred dollars as well. But these were the highly sought after ones, which also happened to sell out quickly. Um, so hands-on courses are definitely longer in duration. Maybe, uh, I mean, you're less likely to come across six-hour hands-on, five or six-hour hands-on courses on the same day. They're probably split into multiple sessions. Um, so I think they start at somewhere around two hours and they can go up to multiple two or three hour sessions uh, distributed over a period of two or three days. And they are likely to yield more CE credits. Uh, what I noticed was that even though I attended a hands-on course for two hours, I, I got close to five CE credits. So I believe um, you can increase the chances of accumulating more continuing education credits by opting for hands-on courses. However, I do know that accumulating a greater number of uh, credits is beneficial, but do keep in mind that your interests matter. So go for something that uh, adds value not only to your profile, but also to your skill set and tool belt. And um, once you register for hands-on courses, you're likely to receive selected samples, which can be taken back home. Uh, I will show you something that I got during a um, hands-on course at the Yankee Dental Congress shortly. And uh, tips to keep in mind while you register or attend uh, continuing education courses would be Two mainly. First one would be, um, so you may come across many packages. For example, there could be um, $500 packages that allows you to attend every single lecture which takes place during the conference. But uh, this may not be beneficial because uh, the number of lectures that you can attend in a given period of time would be less uh, provided um, um, you know, they are distributed over a period of three or four days. But, uh, you know, many of these lectures are bound to overlap. So you will not be able to attend every single lecture that you come across in the schedule. So do keep in mind that it can, these packages can be expensive. So do not go for them unless and otherwise you feel uh, it's the most economic option since you want to attend a number of lectures over a period of few days. Um, and once you do that, I feel your ability to register for hands-on courses might be less if you have a budget in mind. So I would I would suggest splitting your uh, whatever money that you have set aside for the conference, split it for lectures and hands-on courses. And uh, do try hands-on courses because you get to use different equipment which aren't in the industry yet, especially in other countries. So um, I would definitely suggest going for hands-on courses. That could be a priority. And when it comes to lectures, um, we do have domain expertise, which we acquire through dental school or webinars for that matter. Uh, I would suggest going for practice management and uh, patient-centered care related courses, because this might uh, help you develop some cultural competency, sensitivity and uh, an entrepreneurial mindset as well. And uh, one more thing to keep in mind would be for those who want to attend BLS, ALS courses, conferences are a go-to. Uh, I don't feel they are priced lesser or higher than the ones offered by the American Heart Association. So it's the same. Uh, but if you want to attend them, yeah, you can definitely register for them. They do get filled up pretty quickly. So register beforehand. And um, I think that's about it. Some of the highly sought after uh, hands-on courses last year were... Um, and this year for that matter, were um, Botox as well as Invisalign. And there were many um, hands-on implantology courses as well. And from what I noticed, courses related to periodontology sold out pretty quickly, be it free lectures or hands-on courses. So if you are gravitating towards periodontology courses, register early and uh, make sure you have that sorted out as soon as possible. Uh, that's about it for continuing education. Next, let's move on to the exhibit floor. So um, one of the most underrated components of a dental conference, uh, I should say that I had a lot of fun at the exhibit floor. Uh, I set aside close to one or one and a half days to explore the exhibit floor. And this is where I met so many people as well. So um, you can come across dental materials, uh, vendors, who are marketing different materials which are yet to come into the market or which are already available in the market. 
uh, you can come across office equipment such as dental chairs and other equip uh, equipment such as magnification systems for that matter, dental microscopes, loops, and uh, many practice management softwares, then dental labs, publishers and vendors, and school booths. So I'll just probably touch base on every uh, subcategory mentioned over here. Uh, when it comes to dental materials, yes, you can come across multiple uh, uh, restorative materials, dental burrs, polishing instruments, and um, I did come across, let me show you something. Um, I honestly did not expect to do a haul on dental materials that on social media. This was the last thing I had in mind. But uh, if this benefits you, then I would be more than happy to show you something. So these were some of the free materials that I got. Uh, these are from a brand called Shofu. As you know, they're pretty famous for their composite polishing kits. Uh, these are called the Super Snap Singles. I haven't opened them yet. Um, you can use them for uh, composite contouring, finishing, polishing, and super polishing. And they are color-coded. Uh, they come in black, violet, green, and red, respectively. And these are just uh, regular polishing discs and cups. I hope they were visible and there wasn't much of a glare. Then um, this isn't this isn't something fancy. It's just articulating paper. This was one more free sample that I got. And um, okay, so for those of you who are aware of the brand Coco Floors, they actually come up with really aesthetic um, dental hygiene kits. So uh, basically. These dental flosses are slightly different. I don't think they are waxed. I did have some, based on personal experience, I did have some difficulty placing them in between my teeth. But what I did notice was that uh, they did not glide past the uh, foot particles easily. And I felt that uh, they were much more efficient than waxed dental floss, which I did not see coming because I had a lot of difficulty getting them in between my teeth. But once you do, they're pretty efficient when it comes to cleaning. So these were some of the... Uh, free samples that I got. So these are supposed to be available in different scents and flavors. There's lemon or coconut, I'm not sure, orange and strawberry. Um, yeah, so that's about it when it comes to dental materials. Practice management softwares, you do know them. There are many like Salute, Dentrix, and you can actually go to these booths, strike a conversation with the vendors, and uh, they do show demos. Uh, so what I did notice was that um, the response may not be as enthusiastic uh, if they come to know that they cannot actually cater to your needs because you're from a different country. But, um, you know, if you do let them know that you want to learn about the software, they are actually pretty nice. They are open to explaining the same to you. So you can actually, you know, view a demo. You will come to know about the softwares that you're likely to use in dental school once you get enrolled in the same Magnification systems, yes, uh, one of the most famous brands of dental loops, Oroscoptic, does uh, put up a booth in every dental conference possible. And you can avail some minor discounts on their products. Office equipment, um, let's see. Uh, I came across, I'm just going to highlight what I noticed and found very fascinating. Uh, I came across a, a dental chair from Densply Serona that's called Axano and it comes with a lumbar massage feature. So it's pretty beneficial for your patients, especially if they're in for a very long sitting. Uh, with respect to dental labs, um, I believe you can probably, you know, get to know as to how their workflow or the process, you know, goes about. Um, they are mostly digital dental labs, so they will try marketing to licensed dentists in the United States. Uh, publishers and vendors, yes, if you want to purchase any books which may not be available in your country, this is the right place to go to because I do remember them uh, providing a fair discount on some of their books on sleep apnea especially. There were so many books on sleep apnea, implantology and smile design, just to name a few. And um, I believe I have covered everything. The last one would be school booths, as I mentioned during the previous uh, session. School booths are uh, pretty important if you're trying to enroll yourself in a program in any of the dental schools associated with that state where the conference is taking place. Um, so I would say that you're likely to come in uh, to come in contact with or get in touch with um, 
admissions committee members, alumni, and uh, as well as, you know, members from the continuing education department. So uh, feel free to ask them doubts, but do make sure that you do your research before you go to them. That way you impress them. Do not go, go with basic doubts. For example, do not come up with doubts uh, or questions which are explicitly mentioned on your website. Do your research, go through the website, make sure that you're equipped with all the basic information. And if you have anything niche that you would want to add on to your research, then you can probably ask them those questions. I'm not saying, I'm not discouraging you from asking basic questions, but if it's available on the website, then I believe you can do your research and uh, make sure that you make them aware that you have done your work or your side of it and that you know you're just there to know more about the process um i believe that's about it for the exhibit floor uh in addition i wanted to add a note on three more um, materials and equipments that i came across one is called the omnichroma that's o-m-n-i-c-h-r-o-m-a for any of you who want to google it uh, so it's a um, product developed by Toku, Tokuyama. Yeah, it's a Japanese company called Toki, Tokuyama. It's T-O-K-U-Y-A-M-A. So it is a, um, it's a form of composite. But uh, the only benefit or the only difference is that it's huge. Um, you do not have to match the shade for the composite. It's actually universal. Um it matches every shade given in the Vita Classic shade tab from A1 through D4. So all you need is a single tube of composite in spite of the shade of the tooth of the patient. So it does save a lot of time and uh, it works based on a patented smart chromatic principle or what they call a cultured pearl principle. Uh, there's a lot of research being done on the same. So uh, you can probably look into that. Uh, what to keep? You have to keep in mind that uh, many of these booths do provide free samples to dental students in U.S. institutions and licensed dentists in the United States, but not for those who aren't licensed. So, for example, if you go along with, if you're employed as a dental assistant anywhere, you can probably go along with the dentist, and you're likely to get your hands on a free sample. Uh, if not, you can actually ask them for uh, vendors who market the same in your country. So. Uh, they actually enthusiastically respond to that. They look into a book uh, where they have different countries and the respective vendors. So they will give the name of a vendor in your country who can actually sell you such a product. And one more thing, <clears throat> I'm sorry, to keep in mind is that if you are interested in research, this is the best place to explore because you're likely to come across certain materials which may not be available in your country. So it might seldom, you know, it might be seldom researched upon in your country. So you could actually uh set the spark and be one of the first few to research that product or try that product on patients in your country if that is permitted of course after ethical clearance um uh, so i think that's that's about it and uh, there was one more um, equipment that i came across it's called the ray face uh, scanner it basically involves um, a set of three cameras that are arranged in a semicircular fashion around you and uh, they actually capture different angles of your face and using this data uh, the doctor can actually perform smile designing and uh, once a rendered image of your face is created using the uh, data collected by the cameras they can actually show you the final output even before it's delivered to you so it is somewhat like augmented reality i would say so uh, that's one more technology to watch out for and um, I think there's one more that I missed yes uh, there's something called the Gaioma technology from Shofu as well which uh, I really liked uh, they basically involve uh, they are bioactive materials yes somewhat similar to a compomer uh they are nano they are composed of nano hybrid particles and they show very high polishability and sustained fluoride release as well so uh they they offer many uh products predominantly composites so you can look into them i think they go by the name of beauty fill beauty fill yeah that's right and um I believe I have covered the most important materials. Uh, just for fun, you can also go to the Colgate and Crest booths. Uh, they actually give you free samples once you attend uh, an event. 
hosted uh, inside so they basically allow a small group of individuals to attend the event a uh, few at a time and uh, once you leave you actually walk out with three, three samples of their uh, whitening toothpaste i think optic white and colgate total and probably a toothbrush and with respect to crest uh, there was a booth where it was actually a toothbrushing booth with uh, several wash basins where we were allowed to test their um, electric toothbrush and um, a stannous fluoride based toothpaste one was targeted towards the enamel and the other targeted towards gums so uh, once you complete that process you get two free samples of their toothpaste as well um I think that covers um, the exhibit floor. I shall move on to the flip side of conferences. But before I do so, I wanted to show you this new system. It's called the 3M Filtech Matrix system. Um, so it's not available in India. It's available in the States. But uh, I think you would have to uh, have a tie up with 3M and you should make sure that you have an intraoral scanner in your clinic. Um, so this was this is just a typhodont which is given and what you see here is the matrix system. It consists of, I can actually separate it, um, it consists of a lingual matrix that you can snap into the lingual surface of the teeth. I'm sorry. And uh, this is supposed to be the labial matrix. So once you've placed the lingual matrix, you can place the labial matrix. Um, I actually broke the matrix while I tested the... Okay, so this I, I, I did test the product, but um, I attended a hands-on course on it as well. So <laughs> during the same, I kind of broke it. So it doesn't fit properly, but um, I believe this is enough to show you how it works. So as you can see, um, this matrix system can be used for class three and class four composite restorations. Uh, it is not as invasive as preparing a tooth for a ceramic, all ceramic crown. So you can actually get a decent aesthetic results with the help of this, as long as you get the hang of it. There's a learning curve associated with it, so it might take some time, but once you get a hang of it, it does work wonders. And uh, they did put up some uh, statistics and uh, study results, and the, res uh, the results were actually quite comparable to that of uh, all ceramic restorations in terms of patient satisfaction because it is economically feasible as well. At the same time, it did provide uh, uh, decent aesthetic results. So it consists of a, so what you do is I will run you through the steps uh, from the beginning. Uh, you take a scan, you make an intraoral digital scan of the patient's mouth and you send the same to 3M lab. They will generate a customized matrix, 3D matrix for the patient, which I just showed you consists of a lingual and a labial component. And this will be delivered to your office. So all you have to do is snap the lingual and the labial matrix onto the patient's mouth and these labial components consist i'm sorry these labial components consist of windows so uh, this will help you maintain the uh, contour of the tooth as desired okay i'm just going to do away with that and i'm going to show you how the window works so basically this is a window you can actually snap it open and close and once you open it you can fill it up with the composite material uh, i did try flowable and packable composite and based on my experience i feel um, uh, results were superior aesthetically and in terms of uh, comfort when you use uh, a little bit of flowable composite and warmed packable composite so this is a window as you can see i broke this aspect of it uh, can everyone see it you can snap it close and open there's a small vent hole over here so once you fill it with composite and close it um, you apply a little bit of pressure and the excess composite will come out through the vent hole in the bottom and you can actually remove the excess composite and then cure it through the matrix and that's about it um, this is how the output was. 
the laterals and the centrals were restored using the matrix and I was actually pretty impressed with the results. It is very user friendly. However, it is not available in India yet. So if you're in the United States, you can lay your hands on them. But if not, I think we will have to wait. Um, one more thing to keep in mind is that when you go to the exhibit floors, when you actually walk to every vendor, make sure that you ask them why their product is superior to the others. Once you do, they will actually take out a number of pamphlets with um, hardcore research, which shows you the um, results from various randomized control trials, in vitro studies, etc. So you can actually take a look at them. And if you find any loopholes, you can probably research those products as well. So that is one more thing to keep in mind. And uh, there is a magazine called Dentistry Today. They happen to put up a booth every single time at most of the conferences. So you can actually get some of their issues and uh, probably take a look at some of them for free as well. Uh, that is one more thing to keep in mind if you like research. Um, coming to the flip side of conferences, uh, I did not know about this until my last week in Boston. So you can actually attend uh, after conference parties. Uh, the Yankee Dental Congress actually had a, a party which is coined uh, as Dent Cella. So they actually had free drinks and food, photo ops, caricatures, henna art. Um, they also had a band perform for a short period and a really nice dance floor. So it was a very stimulating environment, I must say. Um, it really helps you network at ease. I just felt that the atmosphere was a bit more stressful, very professional. And um, it was, I would say, slightly rushed when I went to the conference, but uh, the after party was honestly the best place to network with people as well. It was very informal and you, know, you, can, you can be yourself at ease. So that's not what I'm about. And it was very stressful to join to in the States. I kind of profile and I feel it definitely is a mind around a bit. So do make use of these opportunities, especially when they're available for free. Um, that is about it. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to mention was that um, Digital Dental Academy put up a uh, photo photo booth for free in the exhibit floor where people had their professional headshots taken for free. So uh, that was a really nice opportunity as well. If you want a LinkedIn profile picture, that's a go to. Uh, I believe you can find them at many conferences, but uh, it's pretty hard to find them for free. So if you do find them, then I would say go for them. And the line for line for such um, freebies are quite long. So you would have to plan in advance and make sure that you get your shot at them. Um, I would like to wrap up with one of the most important principles of going to a conference. Is called networking. Um, not many people may be aware of this, but um, many people, generally based on uh, studies which were done in Harvard, not many are a fan of networking. This is not restricted to healthcare. It's uh, it covers all professions and all individuals in general. Especially if you're introverted, you may not be a huge fan, but do keep in mind that if you're introverted, you actually make a very good listener. That is what studies have shown. So. When you're a good listener, you're likely to ask more questions about the other person as well. So when you meet someone, uh, try to remain pleasant, smile on your face probably, but at the same time remain genuine and put forth your authentic self. And um, you can probably start with small talk. Uh, general icebreakers are fine, but you have to get to the point. You can probably start with a general icebreaker, probably ask them where they're from and then get into dentistry because that is what we want to talk about, right? So um, you can ask them about where they work or what they're doing and that's how you get the conversation started and make sure that you don't make it about yourself and this is not the place to rant. That was also one more thing that I noticed. This is not the place to rant about how difficult it is to go through the process. Uh, this is the place where you have to get more information as to how you can make the best of an opportunity that is available to you and uh, put your best foot forward and how you can maximize or leverage what any opportunity has to offer so that you can 
um, add it as a valuable asset in your application. So um, you can do that. You can probably strike a conversation about the current benefits landscape or the uh, insurance landscape. Or uh, at the moment, I believe one of the most pressing issues would be the um, uh, workforce turnover. There were many people who dropped out of dental practices, especially dent dental hygienists after during and after COVID. So you can probably strike a conversation about current events in dentistry and then delve into what you want. Uh, you should come to that point. If you want a favors from someone, you can probably come to that point. You can ask them if you know if they know someone from an admissions committee or if they know someone in a clinic where you want to shadow or something of that sort or probably someone in a research lab that you're interested to work in. But at, uh, do keep in mind that uh, it shouldn't be transactional, there should be give and take. If they're extremely senior to you, I do understand that there's not much for us to give because they're already uh, quite advanced in your field. So if that's the case, I would say a simple thank you would do or probably a shout out to them because if, if, if they actually feel that you recognize their effort, then they're more likely to help you again. So uh, do, you know, do thank them and remain polite and once you meet a person, I would suggest uh, noting down their name. I'm a pen and paper person, so that is how I did it. But uh, you can definitely note down their name, email address, and probably um, one of the most important aspects of your conversation so that you remember them over a long run. And do get their LinkedIn handles. And once you get back home within a period of 24 hours during which they're likely to remember you, do send them a thank you message saying that you had a very stimulating conversation and that it was very eye-opening or informative. That is how you felt about it. And do keep in touch. Uh, you need to nurture that relationship. As soon as you initiate one, doesn't mean that they're going to remember you years down the lane. So do nurture the relationship. Do find opportunities to talk to them or discuss anything pertinent to dentistry with them. And this way you will keep in touch continuously and you never know when uh, someone you come across during a conference would be uh, you know useful uh, you never know who you who's going to hire you in the future it could be the same person whom you met at a conference so i would say that um, it's important to nurture those relationships not just uh, start the same and uh, make sure that you're not very intrusive at the same time do not drop unnecessary messages but uh, if you feel there is something pressing or uh, something interesting which is going on that you find, you know, that is that happens to be a common interest of the other person as well, then I feel it's worth uh, starting a conversation about. So I believe networking is um, it's it's very important, especially there's a mountain of research which shows that um, you're likely to find more business opportunities in the field with a promotional mindset as coined in the Harvard Business Review. Uh, so if you look forward to networking, if you want to network and see what opportunities it may bring you, then you're more likely to uh, benefit from the same. So keep that in mind and uh, do not stop networking once you join school as well. Continue doing it and I'm pretty sure it will benefit you once you graduate or start your own practice. Once you start your practice, I believe networking might be slightly different. You're more likely to be a mentor for others and um, you are more likely to network with people in your profession. Probably if you're a specialist, then you can network with general dentists. And once they come to know you, they could probably call you as one of the consultants to their clinic or something of that sort. So do keep that in mind. and. Uh, if you're already employed somewhere, you can probably make the best use of discounts and offers that conferences have to offer. I believe that's about it. I already mentioned a book during the previous Instagram live called Super Connector, which uh, covers the basics of forging business relationships. You can probably take a look into it. And there are many more books on networking, I would say, um, articles on Harvard Business Review, on LinkedIn, and uh, there are many healthcare professional specific networking sites besides LinkedIn, which is more general. So you can look into them as well. Uh, I believe that brings us to the end of today's Instagram live. I hope I covered what you wanted to hear and um, I'm open to any uh, to answering any of your queries if you have any. Uh, just to verify, 
was my internet choppy somewhere midway do you want me to repeat something that i mentioned do you have any questions anyone How can we present RCE courses in RCB? That's a good question. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, your CV generally gets pretty lengthy if you were to enlist. Yes, that's correct. Mentioning all the details might be lengthy. Yes, uh, I think it's likely to get very lengthy if you enlist every single CE course that you have taken. Uh, I would probably say that you should mention the most important ones. I would say um, hands-on courses should definitely be given priority because manual dexterity plays an important role. You know, the kinesthetic aspect of dentistry is um, quite important if you want to pursue a career as a clinician. So give importance to hands-on courses. And uh, in addition, if you feel there was any lecture that you attended which was quite impactful then i would suggest adding that but uh, the key is to remain succinct to not mention every single ce course probably and list the top 10 ce courses that you attended uh, by prioritizing I want to know about visa, like do we get traveling visa? Yes, that's a question from Vibhuti. Um, I would say that uh, applying for visa is important. You need to do that beforehand. Yes, if you want, if you register for um, any of the dental conferences in the States, you can use that as a reason to apply for a visa. Um, it would either be a B1, B2 visa, which is a visitor's visa or a J1 visa. It varies from conference to conference, but uh, getting a B1, B2 visa would be key, in my opinion, because you get to stay longer and there are no restrictions like J1 visa, which is probably restricted to the duration of your conference sometimes or probably a little longer than that. Uh, I'm pretty sure B1, B2 would offer a longer uh, duration of stay, so you can go ahead with that. But um, I am unsure whether the conference uh you know tends to select which kind of visa you should go on or the conference organizer tends to select which kind of visa you go on or uh, if it's at the discretion of the embassy so that is something that you might want to ask the conference organizer but from what i have heard i believe most of them go on a b1 b2 visa i hope i clarified your question Any other doubts? You're welcome. Okay, looks like so many new um, attendees have joined. Before I end this live session, would you like me to go back to any part of my presentation, any particular slide that you would want me to go back to so that you can take a screenshot? Uh, do let me know. Can you explain the idea pass match process? Okay, this is beyond the scope of the presentation, but I do have time so I can I can probably explain the same. Um, <clears throat> so, ADIA Pass is a common portal 
it is probably the counterpart of area capid but you apply to residency programs through the same you can apply to aegd gpr or any specialty programs through adia pass and the process is somewhat similar the portal looks similar and uh, the only difference would be um the the match process so once you so there are schools that some schools that take part in match and some that do not take part in match so once you complete the adia process you send your um uh your application through the universities and once you do the same you will be called for an interview once this is complete um the match algorithm begins if that particular university takes part in match so the university will enlist a number of students in a uh, their order of preference as to who they feel would be a great fit for their program and the applicant can actually enlist a number of uh, schools based on their order of preference and these two are put together by the match algorithm and uh, it matches an applicant to the university and program of choice so that is how the process works if you want to know more in detail about it since it is beyond the scope of this presentation uh i would suggest checking capit simplified's website i believe we have a list of faqs if not you can also check um the adia pass search engine if you want to look into programs and uh the american dental education association website does have ample information about the timeline of the process as well so you can probably look into it uh can you go over in short about dental conference information about it okay hi smriti i can definitely do that uh to help you further i can probably go back to one of my um slides so these are the noteworthy dental conferences in the united states and the secure code right behind my picture here i'm sorry um you can probably take a look at it scan the qr code using a different device once i upload this video uh the third party website that i used is called delmain d e l m a i n where they have enlisted all the conferences important conferences in general dentistry innovation and practice management uh, along with the dates uh, website links and um, you know the location so you can probably use a third party website like delmain or you can actually follow the linkedin handles of state dental societies such as massachusetts dental society california dental association and texas dental association just to name a few and you are likely to come across uh, pop ups or posts on um you know upcoming conferences i'm pretty sure you will uh, remain up to date if you do the same i hope i Uh, we have a few new people joining do you want me to go over any part of my presentation that you missed all right um i think i will can possibly answer the same but i believe that's about it we have come to the end of this instagram live which happens to be the second part of dental conferences how to make them count i